on to my next dish, which is mushroom pasta. If you're not a mushroom lover, please stick with me. I'm gonna convince you. I think of mushroom as, I don't know, like the meat for a vegetarian meal in some kind of a way. Frequently when I cook with mushrooms, I just wanna do a dry saute, which means I wanna sear them, I want them to be golden brown. And for that, I need a dry, dry mushroom, but I don't wanna get it wet and I still wanna clean it. So you just take a little bit of a brush and you can try to get the dirt off. And if you can't get the dirt off, just take a piece of paper towel or something like that. That's what you do if you're doing a dry saute. In this case, I'm actually doing a technique that I learned from a wonderful Italian cook in Italy when I was there studying. This technique with the mushrooms is that it's gonna cook for a long time. We're gonna actually draw that moisture out and what that's gonna leave behind is a beautiful mushroom all nutty and golden. And so I figure if I'm gonna have to draw all that moisture out anyway, who cares if it's wet? So I really try to wash it well, the old fashioned way. For this dish, I'm using cremini mushrooms, but you could use button mushrooms, portobello mushrooms, pretty much any mushroom that you would use in an Italian dish. And then I just bring it out of the water and put it onto a paper towel lined here on a sheet tray. When I'm cleaning something in a lot of dirt like this, I lift it out of the water. I don't pour the water back over it into a colander. It doesn't really make any sense to me. So anyway, that's what we're doing here, and this looks pretty nicely clean, so we'll just get rid of this over here. And give it a little bit of a toss. And what I know about mushrooms is how healthy they are for you. They actually contain a lot of properties that help you fight sickness. So basically I just take the very tip off these. You can just hold it down like that and get into a real assembly line. And if you're somebody who favors a paring knife, which some people do. This is how my mom does it. She always holds things like this and does it. That's really old school home cook style. That's not what I do. Anyway, I like the big knife. I feel like a paring knife, a serrated knife, and a chef's knife can do all your jobs. All right, so the other thing I learned about this when I was taught to make it was to really get lemon juice going with your mushrooms. As you're cutting your mushrooms, you squeeze lemon over it and toss it. And, you know, I don't have a really sound reason as to why that had to happen, but like I said, if I learn from an expert, then I stick with their plan. What I have really reasoned through, though, is that these mushrooms cook for a long time. They get very earthy and caramelized and oh, so robust and delicious, and there's something about the lemon that just gives a little bit of brightness and freshness, so that's why I think it's here. I have already prepared quite a few mushrooms. I've cut them up and I've tossed them in lemon juice because that's how I was taught to do it. And I figured out that it tastes good that way. So I'm gonna keep doing it that way. And I'm just getting my pan hot right over here and mincing three cloves of garlic. This is the basis for our sauce. We don't want this pan to be too, too hot because we just wanna get a little bit of sizzle on the garlic. So I've used a cremini mushroom, which is a great choice, and you can always see cremini now in the supermarket. It's kind of amazing how many choices there are. But if you had a portobello or something called a baby bello, or basically just a white button mushroom, it's fine to use that for this dish. You basically want a really nice mushroom, and you don't have to get a super expensive one either. Okay, that looks great. All right, a couple tablespoons of olive oil into my pan here just to get things going. All right, that's good. Get the garlic right in there. And it's got a little sound when it sizzles on in there, so I'm gonna pay attention to it and just stir it around for a second. I like to just get a little bit of the oils released from the garlic so it doesn't have a raw flavor when I stick everything else in. But for this dish in particular, I don't want it to get too golden. And garlic is amazing. There are so many flavors you can get out of it, whether it's raw, or it's just lightly sizzling like this, or sometimes even caramelized. So in go the mushrooms. Now, I was saying before that this is a different technique with the mushrooms. There are times when I quickly, quickly saute in a flat pan, I wouldn't be using all these mushrooms. And then I just wanna do it on a very high heat and I want them to get nice and brown and I like to keep the moisture inside the mushroom. This is a different technique where we're gonna actually coax all the moisture out of the mushrooms and then the mushrooms are gonna be left to slowly simmer in their juices 
and the olive oil, and they're gonna get a really nutty brown, which is perfect. We have our sauce going here, and I've chosen tagliatelle for this dish. I love the way it mixes with the mushrooms, and it's hearty. So with those mushrooms and the thick noodle, there'll be enough oomph for my meat-eating family. They won't even miss the meat, I hope. I know I won't. Always I cook my pasta just a couple minutes short of package instructions. Look on the package, see what the number is, set your timer, and then start tasting, and you won't overcook your pasta that way. And last but not least, I am just going to prepare my parsley. After I've got my mushrooms completely cooked down, I add some parsley. And it's a nice little contrast of flavor. It's pretty, too, to have those little flecks of green. Parsley. It is all chopped up, and it's going into my mushrooms, which have cooked and cooked and cooked. The moisture has pretty much been removed from the mushrooms. This started off as a pound and a half of mushrooms. Unbelievable concentrated flavor now. A good hit of salt and a good amount of freshly ground black pepper. Wow, that's a good tip to have a little snack of dessert before dinner. It really gets the juices flowing. I am going to hit this right now with a little bit of white wine. If you don't have white wine or you don't use wine, you could use chicken stock. Basically, we want to deglaze it to get up the little bits on the bottom of the pan and to really concentrate the flavor a little bit. So just a little dash, maybe more than a dash. And it right away starts to simmer away. And with the wine, you really want to make sure that you let some of the alcohol cook off a little bit. And that happens very quickly if you have your temperature on high. I'm just going to taste it right now. Mmm, all that cooking with the garlic and then the nice fresh parsley flavor, it's fantastic. All right, in goes about a quarter cup of cream, which I'm just going to eyeball, maybe a little more. And that is our sauce. Well, not entirely. This is the first creamy part of our sauce. So I'll just let this simmer a tiny little bit and I have some Parmesan cheese here. And I just want to get a good three tablespoons, maybe more. Oh yeah, maybe three and a half. All right, maybe three and a half. And stir it up and get the pan turned off because we really don't need to do too much cooking here. Mmm. If you want to thicken it up a little bit, you can keep it a little longer. A little taste again. Mmm. Oh gosh, the cheese just rounds it out beautifully. All right, I'm turning the pan off. My tagliatelle is cooked. I know that because I was tasting, because I'm in a tasting mode. And just get this right into the pan. A little bit of water is fine because I have quite a concentrated sauce. I always think about that when I'm doing my pasta. Sometimes I drain it completely because I really just want totally, totally dry pasta. But in this case, I'm fine. All right. Mmm. So one of the big things when you're going to put your pasta directly into your pan, you want to make sure that your pasta is not overcooked because it's going to cook a tiny little bit when it gets to the hot sauce. And you also want to make sure that the pasta to sauce ratio is right. And that is just exactly what I want right here. And when I cook in a pan like this, I think it looks so great that all I really want to do is just serve it in this pan. And I am excited. Dinner. So easy.